Hello and welcome to today's daily devotion. Uh, Today I'd like to look at a scripture passage that we went over briefly on Sunday from the book of 2 Samuel uh, chapter 12 verses 13 through 15 and uh, also a piece of verse 18. When you think about this scripture today as I read it, think about the punishment that God produces through the prophet Nathan to be able to share with King David. What is the first thing to come to mind when you hear about what is going to happen to David and to the people he loves? Again, from 2 Samuel uh, chapter 12, Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. But because by doing this thing you have shown utter contempt for the Lord, the son born to you will die. The Lord struck down that child that Uriah's wife had borne to David, and he became ill. On the seventh day, the child died. So if you've ever watched probably any sport before, basketball, football, soccer, you name it, uh, often within these games there are different uh, personal fouls that can occur. Fouls that somebody has gone over the top and done something intentional to maybe be able to sway a play, maybe even to be able to put punishment upon another player of the opposing team. And in this moment, the referee or the umpire, whoever is judging these games, has the right and has the rule to be able to pronounce punishment, sentence, or foul upon the other player who commits this egregious act. Sometimes it can be uh, a free penalty kick. Sometimes it can be uh, a loss of yardage. Sometimes it can be complete ejection from that game and maybe games that are yet to follow. And as you are watching that, maybe sometimes you see a foul and you think, man, that penalty seemed pretty harsh for what that person just did. I don't even know if they were intentionally doing that. Well, maybe Well, it's not up to us to decide. It's up again to that referee or to that umpire to be able to decide. They have been put in that place. Today in our scripture text, God is in the place of being able to play judge. And in fact, he's not just playing judge, he is the judge. And not just here on earth, but the ultimate judge over all things, all people, in all places. And the act that David commits is something that's intentional this personal foul upon God and upon his word and his plan. And so the Lord puts forth uh, a penalty to David. He says, you will not die, your sin is forgiven, but because of this act you have committed, because you have forcefully placed your will, opposing will upon God, your son is going to die. And so what did you think of when you heard that? Uh, This poor boy only lives to be seven days old and suffers death because of the hands of his father and the sins that he has committed. Uh, I will admit, it's it's a horrible thing. It's very, very difficult, probably for most of us, to be able to stomach. But this is the consequence of our sin, uh, death across the board. All of us uh, face death because of the sin that was committed from very early on in the Garden of Eden. I did see one commentary uh, that I want to read for this, uh, just a simple couple of lines that I think really puts it into perspective for us. The author writes that God's punishment for sin seems so harsh indicates how little we grasp the seriousness of our sin. And I think that's the truth. We look upon the death of this child that was only seven days old and we think it's so horrible but we forget that that truly is the penalty of sin. And sometimes we just don't take it seriously enough. Not only big sins like murder or adultery, these sins that are big in our eyes, but all sin. But in fact, this is why God sends Jesus to this earth to be able to provide not only a judge for us, but also a savior, one who gives us eternal life because of the penalty that he pays. Think about how harsh that penalty was. It wasn't only this one and only son that had to die. It was the one and only perfect son 
Jesus takes the penalty of all of our sin, and maybe sometimes we've heard that so many times that we forget the harshness that actually occurs on that cross. But it happens, and it happens for you and for me, also that we can be forgiven and so that we can have God's love. And so today when we think about that penalty of sin, we do remember that there is a harsh penalty, but also remember that there is an amazing reward that comes because of what Jesus has done for us. Let's pray. Lord, today simply we ask that you will allow us to keep our sin uh, just upon our minds, that we know, Lord, that it truly is something that we need to be able to avoid. But also, Lord, we ask that in the forefront will be your love and your forgiveness, and that we will run our lives and live according to the rule and to the law that you have given to us, and that we will share these good things with all we come in contact with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.